Before the Constitution was signed, the United States of America was not much of a United State. It was more like a partnership of 13 independent states gathered around the common idea of taking the future into their own hands. The feeble foundations of this partnership, called the Articles of Confederation, provided no solution for the growing problems, especially concerning various disputes among the states. Such relations caused the economy to stagnate, leading to aggravation of social differences and the rise of disorder and even rebellions. Our Congress was useless. They had no levers of authority on these issues, let alone the means to implement any kind of decision. The situation became unbearable. Something had to be done to bring back order or the country would have collapsed. I strongly agree. We also needed to make sure people were guaranteed their right to liberty. This would have surely eased the tensions in our society. So I had an idea that we would gather for a little chit chat. All of us, all 13 states. Magnificent. But first we had to call George. I received the news about the convention in Philadelphia. Oh, the pain in my back was killing me. Wasn't so sure if I was going to come in the first place since I was too busy around here at my estate in Mount Vernon. In the end, I doubted the convention had the potential to change things. Rebellion? Rebellion? There was a rebellion in Massachusetts. What? Thousands rose to their arms against the injustice they suffer. Heck, this wasn't what we fought for. This thing had to be resolved. Once and for all, straight to the convention. The Confederation Congress called on all 13 states to send their delegates to Philadelphia. Among the delegates were many new faces on the political scene in the United States, but also prominent politicians such as Benjamin Franklin, Alexander Hamilton, and George Washington, who were selected president of the convention by unanimous vote. Yes, you can thank me for putting together this near impossible feat of convening the Constitutional Convention. Washington was really reluctant to attend at first, but we won him over. What about Thomas Jefferson? and John Adams. Has anyone seen them? They are the founding fathers after all. Greetings from Paris, guys. At the time, I was absent from the States being an ambassador in France. Same here, but in London. The convention was far from a mere formality. Lively debates over the Constitution articles lasted for several months in this sweltering summer heat. During that time, sessions were kept far from the eyes of the public. Nothing spoken or written can be revealed to anyone, not even your family, until we have adjourned permanently. Gossip or misunderstanding could easily ruin all the hard work that we had to put in that summer. Shh. Don't you worry, I kept a detailed account of everything that happened. There was truly a fierce debate between delegates. We just couldn't agree on questions such as state representation, proportionally to the population of the states, or an equal representation. Thankfully, delegates from Connecticut proposed a compromise by adopting both principles. And that's how we got the House and the Senate. We also had to make a compromise on issues of relations between states and the government and validation of slavery in the South. Although some northern states had already started to outlaw the practice, they went along with the southern states' insistence that slavery was an issue for individual states to decide and should be kept out of the Constitution. Finally, on September 17, 1787, the final text of the Constitution was signed by the convention's delegate. The first to sign was George Washington. This went far better than I had expected. At some point, it really looked like we would never come to a conclusion. We the people established this Constitution for the United States of America. In order to prevent the tyranny we disdain, we devised a governing system based on the principles of separation of powers, checks and balances, and federalism. So the federal government consists of three main branches, the executive, the legislative, and the judicial. Neither branch had the supremacy of power and was able to control the other two. I was glad we finally managed to overcome the chaos of the earlier period. The principles of federalism clearly define the relation between the central government and the states. Everyone was now aware of their rights and duties. Okay, so now Madison and I had a task to persuade the states to ratify the Constitution. This was anything but an easy task. We wrote a total of 85 essays, which became known as the Federalist Papers. Yes, what we wanted was for people to get to know what kind of government we were trying to build here. The one that would be to the benefit of every one of us. And we did it. Good job, James. December 1787, one after another, states ratified the Constitution. It was a long campaign that lasted until May 1790. And that's how the United States of America got its Constitution. 
Hey, wait a minute. There was more to this. Oh, right. The amendments. Massachusetts only agreed to ratify the Constitution if amendments were made shortly thereafter. Creating the United States was more than just establishing the order and securing the base for further prosperity. It was also about giving the people true freedom, the one they fought for against the British. That's right, we needed to provide people with safe guarantees of their personal freedoms and the rule of law. That's why I composed a set of amendments to the Constitution known as the Bill of Rights. Hardly any anti-federalist state would have ratified the Constitution if they weren't promised the Bill of Rights. Their wish was to clearly define the limits of the federal government and explicitly state their fundamental rights. Things considered fundamental human rights today were at the time quite revolutionary. The freedom of religion, speech, and the press, the right to assemble, and to have a fair trial were unknown to almost all societies at the time. For their effort in creating the Constitution, Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, and John Jay were included in the list of founding fathers. The Constitution of the United States of America is the oldest active codified constitution in the world.